Uh, just be there. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So what I would request to you that on Monday, please do not miss it. I won't take much time. It would be around half an hour. But I really don't want to tell you right now because I'm already making a very good preparation on that. So those who are young people, I mean to say both young and veterans can be there. Yeah, Vaisak Tat. Yeah, very good evening. Hello. I don't know how to pronounce and I would uh, recommend, uh, recommend that uh, our uh, Thomas Hutzer is there from Germany. I would quickly start with the main part. Uh, so a request to be on Monday at 9.15 p.m. and uh, tomorrow in this channel, uh, a very, uh, I would say, um, responsible, senior and a very knowledgeable person, Professor Sudesh Ganguly, would be there to talk on particle physics. So I think that you would really enjoy tomorrow. It is 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time and uh, we would start talking on that. So I would like to share the Jamboard and uh, want to go back what, sir, I'm having difficulty in learning parallel transport. Okay, so Adarsh, what you can do is that we will deal with parallel transport. Uh, and that is a very interesting thing that you are learning. Uh, so you do let me know what is the problem uh, over chat over here. If it is not a very lengthy problem, uh, okay, Vaishak Dutt, okay. So if you're not, a thank you, Vaishak. So if you have, uh, it is not a very technical problem, I would like to solve it here only. And if it is too mathematical, you can get in touch with me because we are here uh, in terms of a different understanding. So we take it from here and we have, I just wanted to go through the slides once. We have understood it is a set of partial nonlinear differential equations. We have also understood that Ricci curvature, etc. these are the names. And so I would take uh, the, uh, uh, I would say the equation from here and over here. So I am having a difficulty in the mathematical part. Okay, others. so you have my email ID, you have, what's my, you have my WhatsApp number. So please do let me what is exactly the problem. If it's a mathematical problem, I would try to solve it differ, uh, separately because this class is meant to give you an idea about Einstein's field equation. So you're absolutely welcome, others. Please do email me, let me know what is the problem. I will definitely solve it out. No problem with that. So we uh, we start again fresh with uh, this Einstein field equation. Just want to keep this equation right in front of you. Now, the first thing is that we start with this Ricci curvature tensor, this part, the, this one. We'll start today with this one, which is called the Ricci curvature tensor. Okay, yeah, thank you, Adish. And this Ricci curvature tensor, as we have noted earlier, it tells that how a volume of matter changes when it moves through curved space. So let me put it over here. Uh, yeah, so here it is, just a second. Uh, I don't know why it is not expanding. Oh, oh, oh. just a second, it's a big problem. Anyway, just take it from here and just be on the line. This sir. <coughs> I've got a bad throat. Maybe for this winter is coming, so my throat is always a little bit affected. <coughs> yeah. So how a volume of matter 
when it changes through curved space. This is basically what this particular tensor measures. We have already understood what is tensor all about earlier, although we are going through the lectures uh, also. So this is what the volume of matter changes when it moves through curved space. I will definitely go to the slides, but before going to the slide, I would uh, like to explain to you manually because I'm always used to whiteboard, etc. So that makes a sense. So if I take a kind of a sphere, let us imagine this to be a sphere. Okay, although it is not. So let us imagine to be a nice three-dimensional. So I don't know uh, about field equation. Is this class for beginners? Absolutely, Vishnu. This is the class for beginners. This is the class where you can learn field equations right from the beginning. But because we have already covered seven, eight classes, I would request you to go to the live lectures in this. Don't worry, by tonight or tomorrow, I will make a playlist. It is easy for you. But go to live section and start watching about general relativity. Also, you can do, there are numerous videos of mine. But yes, you are at the right place. We are learning field equations, especially Einstein's field equation, preparation, etc., for the beginners. So you can be more than happy. <laughs> okay, so what we uh, I want to do is that, for example, if this is a kind of a sphere, and if, uh, say for example, if there is one person standing over here, okay, there's another person standing over here. Let us assume, whatever, the position. And what I'm going to do is that, I would start start with a typical, you know, kind of a Euclidean space. So here you see the person going, and here you see the person going. So they would go on and on and on, and parallel lines never intersect with each other. That is what we know as far as the Euclidean postulates are concerned. Now here, even if I try to go, this would go and somehow meet over here, and this would also go and somehow meet over here okay so both of them would be somewhere meeting right on the poles they would be meeting somehow right on the poles now this is actually a typically what is called the geodesics this is known as the geodesics that is the shortest path that two lines take the shortest path that two lines take so if it, this is a geodesics in case of a uh, what i would say uh, for a Euclidean space, then this is the kind of a geodesic which they would take. So uh, I would like to draw it, uh, uh, just, uh, excuse me, this this is a, a kind of a, I won't say this is the right one. I need to draw it once more for you. So I will erase this one. Right? And what I would do is that uh, take a fresh pen and this would be something like this. This would be something like this, yeah. So this is what is called a positive, positive, definite, positive. Okay, let us make it as positive curvature. Positive curvature, this is called a positive curvature where the two lines are meeting at each other. Now you see uh, what happens is that this particular positive curvature, when we will be dealing with metric tensor, we will have a minus plus 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 metric and one uh, we will also have a plus minus 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 metric okay these are basically conventions it is not that this metric is right this metric this is a convention either we take a minus metric i have shown earlier if you remember in special relativity minus metric means time dilation that can also be taken and a plus can also be taken so these metrics are basically convention so and in this metric when we are taking minus then it will converge it will take a plus different kind of things will happen but i just wanted to tell you so don't get confused with those metrics now what happens i don't have the i cannot create an animation right over here so what i what i do is that if i take a kind of a sphere a ball I just try to imagine what i am trying to show you it won't be the same if i try to move this along the geodesic you see what is happening what i am trying to do is using the mouse and this becomes smaller and further smaller and it is kind of a gets further smaller uh, are you getting my point? Please do respond to me in the chat box. I feel better. So here you see each time I'm trying to move the ball, it is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, it is converging. That is the size of the ball <coughs> uh, would uh, decrease in terms of, okay, thank you very much, physics score, in terms of the deviation. Okay, it would decrease. Now it might happen it would increase also. But what I am trying to make to you all understand is that this is sorry this is 
this is actually what the Ricci curvature tensor does. Okay, I mean to say it is not a kind of a uh, that the volume is going. Uh, what what you need to what what you need to understand is that if I am taking this type of a uh, you know uh, flat space. Okay, let me use the uh, this one. Now, if I take a, this kind of a uh, I would say a flat space, and if I even take a ball over here, okay, and if I try to move the ball, what uh, sorry. What is going to happen? It is going to be the same. That means the volume won't change. The volume won't change. It would be same everywhere. In case of a Cartesian coordinate, are you getting my point? In case of a Cartesian coordinate. Now, you see if this is the same size of the ball, I mean to say it is not a perfect drawing, but if this is the same size of the ball at position one, I say at position one, this size of the ball put to position one. This is the size of the ball at position two, it has reduced, but it has the same. Here also at position three, this is something different. It it here also it is the same. That means what? That means like a light cone in a way. Absolutely, absolutely. You're right, dog. Uh, I mean to say, I'm uh, again sorry. I always apologize for a, a wrong pronunciation, Mister Dog Ides. Maybe is Ides of March of Shakespeare, etc. Mass density, yes, it will change. I will come to that point. Uh, let us go one by one. So, uh, uh, dog, uh, you, uh, uh, sorry for the pronunciation. You, it looks like a light cone. And uh, I think, dog, you are very right telling that. Now you see, I will try to, uh, because you have put this idea, very good. Uh, this is brilliant. So, let me tell you, <coughs> if I take a light cone, say, for example, from here, I'm just interrupting, I mean to say, because dog has already told that. So this light cone, let me let me show show it to you. So if I take a typical kind of a light cone over here, right? Uh, I hope you are uh, watching this. Yes, it means the sum of the triangles not lying in the sphere is not 180 degree. Absolutely, absolutely, Vishnu, you're right. And that is what is basically non-Euclidean geometry. Absolutely, you're right. There's the sum of the triangle. I mean to say it won't be a triangle even because triangles are made out of straight lines. Here we don't have a straight line. You are absolutely right on the point. So. Uh, talking to what dog has rightly told now if you see this is a light cone and if i uh, uh, if i take the uh, this part of the story say for example and if i put it over here actually what we call this is actually a generalization it is not a generalization over here it is a generalization of this g the metric tensor i would say the the measurement of the metric tensor which we will look now it is basically an elaboration or it is a generalization of light cone because light cone uh, i hope a dog is listening uh, so light cone means what light cone is for a inertial frame of reference which we have got a light world lines uh, it is divided for example the present past and the future but in case of a metric tensor the same light cone the same measurement the same events are being more generalized so if you are taking for an intuitive idea, Dodge, that this is a kind of a uh, uh, looks like a light cone. It looks like a light cone. It's typically not a light cone. This is a kind of a movement. But what you have told, that light cone will come later when we will deal with the metric tensor part. Okay. So what I am trying to tell is that this, this geodesics, these uh, uh, surfaces remain the same, but here the, surface, the, the sphere, it changes. So from this, uh, what we can, what is light cone? Uh, Vishnu, I think uh, you need to look a little bit into special relativity. I will explain to you later. Light cone is basically a kind of a spatial and temporal distance through which we can measure uh, the space-time interval. Uh, you can go back to special theory of relativity. I think you will be answered because if now I go on answering what is a light cone, I will have to go back again several pages. So uh, Vishnu, don't take me wrong. You can very well learn light cone, go through that, and then uh, you will understand. I will uh, you know, talk about light cones later because today I have a different agenda. So hope you don't take me wrong and please don't get angry. Uh, light cone is something in special relativity. You go and learn and if you cannot understand, you can let me know. So the, 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 the thing is that in this kind of a geodesics where things are not taking any change, here things are getting a change. So there are two aspects. One is the measure that how much is the change. 
as Praveen was telling that uh, what happens with the mass density? Does it change with the volume? Absolutely, the yeah, mass density will change and that is being measured by the stress energy momentum tensor. Okay, Praveen, why stress energy momentum tensor? Because in case of the matter, it is all measured by stress energy momentum tensor. Volume of matter changes due to a volume of matter changes due to mass or due to mass. Volume of matter changes. Which is the cause? Which one is the effect? Volume of matter changes due to mass or due to mass, volume of matter changes. Volume of matter changes due to mass. Yeah. Uh, volume uh, due to mass. Volume of matter changes due to mass or due to mass, volume of matter changes. No, no, no. It is it is in the either way. I mean, to cause and effect is not. The volume due to the uh, you know, mass, the volume of the matter is changing. Okay. So it is due to the matter that the volume is changing. Volume itself, if you take it, has got no value, isn't it? Volume means what volume? It just has to be a matter or something, right? So what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm trying to uh, give you an idea is that there are two aspects in this kind of a figure. I will go back to this figure. One is that how much the matter is changing. That is one. Also, another thing is important in generativity. If this, if the flat space has got a change of C. Say, for example, in a flat space, I'm moving things. If it has got a change in, say, for example, C, then in a non-Euclidean on a spherical space, how much the matter is changing up to C3. And that is why I told somebody was taking about parallel transport. It shows how much the two vectors are different. Is it this different or it is this different? How much the matter or the uh, you know vectors are different? That degree of change would help us to measure something more. So here you see what I am trying to show you is that this has got a positive curvature. So here it is changing. Now, when I talk of, say, for example, okay, let me remove this. Uh, this is different. So if I talk of this, okay, say, for example, volume of matter or etc. that we are talking about right here, then here also we have to understand the volume change, etc., has to be used, uh, you know, uh, we have to use it using calculus. That means this volume, whatever, the spheres volume, etc., whatever we are taking, here also then we have to, uh, you know, differentiate and differentiate and differentiate using this. And we have to find out a differential volume. So here also we have to take what is called a differential volume, right? Differential volume. And this is called what is called a volume form. We will come to that. I'm just letting you know this is not a usual volume which it would be, but it will be something which is called a differential volume. Because here also we have to use infinite simul calculus. Why we have to use infinite simul calculus? Simple. The reason is that we are using manifolds, etc. So we have to use that. I mean to say there is no way that we cannot use calculus and directly go into that. So it would be a kind of a differential volume. Just to give you an idea about differential volume, I would like to show you this particular figure so that you can understand this. Okay, let me take it to the fresh slide so you can see. This is actually what is called the differential volume. Okay, this is what is called the differential volume. Now you see here what is happening. Just a note. So this is the dV. You see the sphere. Okay, this is the track angle this is the this, this this is the line okay now these two points these two points this is the differential volume measured by dv because the moment we will move into this kind of a curvature this kind of a curvature the volume as well as everything will change we have to use this kind of a mathematics to know because this 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 is for spherical coordinate anyway this is the dr differential radius change this is the original r this is the phi and this is the d phi and this is the d theta angle which causes a small small change in over here i don't want to go into this part is is taking the derivative polarizing the object Absol absolutely uh, this is uh, actually technically i i would say this is not a derivative it is called what is what is the term called uh, co covariant derivative it is actually usual derivatives won't work out here Okay, I will come to those things. It is called a covariant derivative. Okay, so, okay, fine. So we are going a little bit off topic. So uh, that, that is my problem. So first we got what is called a Ricci curvature tensor. That means it defines that how much the 
volume of matter changes when it moves from space to flat place. Okay. <coughs> I would now, uh, sorry, I would now like to show this uh, where we actually are. I'm so sorry. So here you see, uh, this is already being covered. So let me go directly to the picture so that you can understand. Not this one. Uh, I will come to those part later. Uh, let me go. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, see this one. I think this would be better. So the ball shrinks in size as it moves along the geodesics. It means positive curvature. And this R, which I have already highlighted below, actually shows the Ricci curvature tensor. Here you see, uh, do, don't uh, uh, mind about the SVEG. This is a different thing. This is called sectional curvature, which I have derived actually in this slide. Uh, don't worry. So you see straight line, no curvature. Positive line, it is greater than zero. And for this, uh, uh, you know, those which are diverging, they have got a kind of a uh, less than zero. So if I take it further, here you see, these are the three diagrams which actually shows you that uh, how things will actually differ. Okay, this is again a very gross understanding, mind it, all, all those viewers who are watching, this is not a very mathematical understanding, but at an initial level, I think this is good. So from here, you can we can say this, Ricci curvature tensor is a geometric object that measures the curvature of a manifold. The, it is named after Gregorio Ricci Curbastro. Ricci tensor can be thought of as a measure of how much a shape is deformed. You see this line, third line, how much space is deformed as one moves uh, along geodesics. Ricci tensor can be used to measure. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. Suddenly everything went blank. Yeah, I froze at the geodesics information. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, just uh, be there. Uh, can you hear me now? Is it uh, uh, am I? Is it audible? Uh, please tell me because I cannot understand. Hello, am I? Am I audible? Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. All right. So uh, just a second. So we, we understood uh, where it was uh, much better. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay. So this is what is all about the Ricci curvature tensor that it uh, and it shows that the Ricci tensor is more compact. This part, the how it is compact, this is actually indices that I will come to the uh, come to part later. Okay. Now what I will do is that I will remove this and uh, I will add my Jamboard in order to show you that what the metric tensor does, what the metric tensor does. Okay. Now, <clears throat> okay. So for example, if I take a kind of a, uh, what I would say a flat space, any, any, any flat space, I would assume this to be a Euclidean space. Say for example, if I take any kind of a flat space and I want to measure, say for example, this vector going around this way and for example this vector what what i want to measure anything for example the distance from this point to this point uh, i want to measure the angle i want to measure this angle i want to measure from this point to this point whatever it is wh wh whatever the things that i really meant to mention okay now this can be used by euclidean geometry i mean to say using using euclidean geometry i'm so sorry Geometry. I was thinking to purchase a pen tab, to be very honest, because you are just like my friends. But I gave up because I my handwriting is horrible. And using this, I think it makes much better sense because everything can be done over here. Initially, I was a little bit struggling, but now things are very fine. Uh, very fine. Rohat Pirzada. Good evening, Rohat. Good evening, Rohat. Rahat. 
Very good evening. Very good evening. Okay, so we'll come back. Now, if I take a kind of a curvilinear surface like this, if I take a curved surface, something like this, and I have got those coordinates, any, any kind of a curved surface, I'm just considering, then what the problem that will come over here is that if I try to define this point and this point, and instead of a line, it would go a little bit curved. Instead of angle, how will I measure that? From this point to this point, things will become something different. So what the metric tensor does is that it measures actually the causal structure of space-time. So metric tensor, metric tensor measures the causal structure of space-time. Okay. Causal structure of space-time, I hope you understand. It's everything related to the causal structure, whatever, the angles, distance, etc. Now, this term, again, there is a confusion. This term, don't get confused. Metric tensor, as itself, if you are talking about, the metric tensor means any kind of a tensor which measures. Any kind of a tensor which measures. That means I can have a metric tensor for Euclidean space also. I can have a metric tensor for black holes, for uh, non-rotating black holes, for Schwarzschild, Schwarzschild black hole, anything. So metric tensor adds itself, it is a very... Uh, you know, wrong term to use. So metric tensor of what? Metric tensor of general relativity, metric tensor of black hole. So in general, whenever we use the word metric, we mean to say any kind of a measurement. Identity matrix in 2D, 3D Euclidean space. Absolutely. 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 So in general, why I'm telling, because I have seen students faltering in this metric tensor, immediately they go to the conclusion of general theory of relativity. Absolutely not. Metric tensor can be any tensor. I can also make a hyperbolic surface, etc. for over there. So it is basically what we call in general, it is a kind of a tensor. Okay, I would like to go back to this slide where I have actually given a fine, uh, you know, nice kind of a perspective of metric tensor. And I would like to show you over that. So uh, here you see that last time what we did from here is that we tried to uh, we tried to measure that this uh, is what is the metric tensor is about. Now those terms which I have simple definition of tensor. Okay, uh, for Vishnu, uh, can Sujoy or anybody type out? I think it is better because to engage people rather than me telling. Uh, Sujoy or uh, may he, maybe Rahat or uh, who is there? Mm, Vishak is there, Adarsh is there. Anybody can help Vishnu to uh, make him understand what is a simple definition of tensor. So we can say that Vishnu, a simple definition of tensor is a tensor is a mathematical object which preserves uh, the movement when we are moving from one coordinate to another coordinate. That means from a straight coordinate to a curved coordinate when we are trying to move whatever changes will happen certain set of rules will always be the same and that is the use of metric tensor through powers of number uh, yeah yeah i think i have got the light so am i am i pronouncing you your name as right uh, dodge ides please do let me know because i feel very uh, bad when uh, if people uh, mispronounce anything it's stressed through powers of numbers keeps the information so ides have already told i have flashed on the screen vishnu it is actually a kind of a mathematical object which preserves the information uh, through, yeah, keeps the number of information. I think I just rightly told. So here you see in the stress energy, uh, sorry, in the metric tensor, tensor is a math construct which obeys certain, yeah, absolutely. I think Thomas Huth has got absolutely to the point answer. Vishnu, you should thank Mr. Thomas. Uh, he has given absolutely the right answer. Tensor is a mathematical construct which obey, obey certain transformation rules with respect to coordinate transformation. I think this is the ideal, one of the best definition. I would personally like to thank Mr. Huth for providing this. So here on your screen, you have got the most uh, efficient and a very co coincise definition of tensor uh, for you, Vishnu. So here you see that some of these tensors are getting cancelled off. Uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, all those things will cancel off. And we are left with only 10 components of the tensor. Uh, so right below, you can see these are the 10 components. Okay. Now, as you can see, what I was trying to talk, talk about here, that is what I have tried to tell you, that if I'm trying to move around from this place to this place and from this place to this place, how will I do? Because things are not very easy. 
because these are actually curvatures which needs to be maintained as uh, Huth has properly put that how will I change, how will I do, and that is what exactly which is being done with metric tensor. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So now you see there is another thing about metric tensor and I have shown it earlier, I don't remember, uh, I have shown it, I remember one of the videos in tensor, why the symmetric nature of tensor. So here you see this G mu nu component and G nu mu. Okay, I will just go back to my uh, this part and then I will tell you. See what happens typically. This is a kind. Of, let us understand it a little bit intuitively. So, if I take, say, for example, G mu nu, okay, which equals to G, uh, uh, sorry, G nu mu, say, for example, in this way. Okay. Now, typically, what happens is that you know this part of the tensor, which is the same. This part and this part is the same. It has got many mathematical implications. First is that, well, number one, if it is symmetric, it follows the symmetrical rules of physics. Uh, we know what it is symmetry. I will come to the symmetrical nature of physics in general relativity. First, it, it will follow what is in general for the symmetrical nature. Another very important idea, although this is not present over here, somebody, Vishnu was asking about parallel transport. So say, for example, I, I, I mean to say I'm giving you a kind of an intuitive geometrical understanding what symmetric tensor would be. Uh, you see, uh, in case of a parallel transport, whatever, whatever be, if I'm trying to move in this direction and I come from here, you know, and then I reach over here. Say, for example, I'm moving, moving, moving over here and I come back to here. So I make a kind of a mathematical uh, description, right? I can make a kind of a Myra Rahat. Yeah, very good evening, Myra. Very good evening. Where are you from? If you can just tell me. Um, I think I saw your name for the first time. Uh, welcome. So what I'm trying to tell, if I make a kind of a this part, if I'm moving in this way with a mathematical calculation with these two coordinates, okay? That means I am taking a coordinate system which is moving from year to year. Are you getting my point? From here to here, I'm taking these uh, spatial coordinates. I mean to say uh, the second drag metric tensor. Now, if I take the same kind of a thing and you might say, sir, let us move from here to here, clockwise and anticlockwise direction. So you will see that the mathematical results that I will get from here would be the same about here. Why? Because both of them are symmetric. So the mathematical calculations, whether I move from here to here in order to calculate the vector, etc., will be the same. And that is why you see there is something which is called a Christoffel symbol. And in Christoffel symbols also, this, uh, you know, metric tensor, uh, uh, this, this uh, sorry, this uh, symmetric tensor components are also the same. In Christoffel symbols also, it would be the same. So if I take a kind of a, uh, say, for example, Christoffel symbol, I'm just drawing it for the sake of drawing. Uh, it might be, oh, you're, you're from Pakistan, Lahore. Okay, yeah, great, welcome. Wonderful place, Lahore, full of culture and music and ghazal, wonderful. Well, you're very welcome to this lecture. So if you if I take this kind of a, say, for example, if I draw a metric tense, uh, sorry, a Christoffel symbol, which has got, say, for example, a la lambda, and then it has got any other components, uh, for example, this mu nu. And this would be also again equal, is would be also again equal to this uh, lambda. And then I would swap these coordinates to nu mu. Sorry, uh, this nu mu. Okay, I'm sorry for the handwriting. So what I'm trying to make understand is this symmetric nature, be it metric tensor, be it Christoffel symbol, then we will see stress energy momentum tensor. The calculations from either side of the surface, be it here or be it here, it would maintain a symmetry. It would maintain the same rules and it would maintain a kind of a parity. And that is the beauty of being a, a thing to be symmetric. Yes, yes, Mr. Hothi, you can tell that this is the reason why. Absolutely, I think you're brilliant, right? Thank you very much. The reason why what Huth is telling is that this is the reason why the 16 equations get reduced to uh, 6, I mean, it's a 10 equation because of the symmetric nature. So 0, 0, it gets cancelled out. That means when we are doing the partial order derivative calculation also, Huth, we have to remember that uh, we actually uh, will be easier in terms of calculation because of this symmetric nature. Okay. 
<coughs> so here you see I have written that in generative metric tense as a fundamental concept. So, okay, so uh, then we go to the next part. This I have shown, I don't need to explain. This actually measures what is called the uh, curvature. That means which curvature is very big, which curvature is small. Okay, here it comes. What does it mean to be, you know, a tensor to be symmetric? Myra, you, I, I, you are from Lahore, so you can just look into it. We have started around about 37 minutes from now. So don't worry about the covariant, contravariant part. I will come to that part later. Uh, on the right hand side, those, uh, uh, you know, red arrows try to mention. So the laws of physics will be the same, will remain invariant, whatever the way they take. And what Huth has again po pointed out, I would like to highlight Huth's uh, quotation uh, line that the reason why 16 equation reduced to 10. I think that's brilliant. So because we saw that the general laws of nature must be, uh, must be expressed in identical rules relative to each other. So the laws, uh, I mean, to say the symmetric nature explains that. Now we go to the second part, and that is why you will see. So you see g mu nu equals to g mu nu mu. The, in case of a flat space, these kinds of a Euclidean thing won't occur. So symmetry of the metric tensor is important, but it allows to define the notion of distance in curved space time. It is not necessarily that it would be straight. It would be curved in case of a geodesic. Now, here is something very, very interesting. You see what happens in a flat space. If I take the kind of a diagonal, uh, I would say diagonalize a, a matrix uh, in case of an identity matrix I3, which is right there on the screen, you can see that it is identity matrix. Okay, but uh, right below your skin, we ha I have taken a spherical coordinate. And if I diagonalize it, uh, I won't get a kind of a uh, identity matrix. So the symmetry of the metric tensor ensures that the geodesics are always smooth curves. Now, what do I mean by smooth curves? I will come later because this smooth curve is smooth, uh, smooth manifold, etc. I will come to that. Let, 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 us, let us think of this that it has not got, got any jumps or kinks. It is straightforward and it is quite very smooth. So that would actually gives us an, give us an idea. So here is a kind of an, you know, uh, summary that symmetry of the metric tension ensures that the geodesics are smooth. What Huth has also told that is very important. Why 16 equation gets reduced only to 10 and symmetry of the metric tensor allows to define the notion of distance in curved space time and which means that the laws of physics will be same in all frames of reference. Now, you might be asking a question that is it that uh, the symmetric nature that uh, the, the sorry, the metric tensor is only symmetric? No. That will be our discussion in the next, uh, that is, uh, Monday. Tomorrow, uh, we, I will be there with the podcast. So we will see also the symmetric nature of the stress energy momentum tensor, the right-hand side element, why it causes uh, a symmetry, and also what is the meaning of the symmetric nature of trend. I mean to say, if that is symmetric and this is symmetric. Also, one thing uh, I have missed, which I will be showing in the next class, is that when we take, okay, let me go over here and explain. So uh, when we take a kind of a, uh, this kind of a thing, for example, a flat space time, and we are trying to define any matrix, et cetera. So you will see that when we take a kind of a, a sphere, uh, we are always concerned with spheres. Then what we do is that if I take a kind of a, any, any element, say, for example, any kind of a information over here, okay, and I try to put it over here, when I'm trying to put this information, this is flat. So for, with calculation of coordinates from here to here, I can say whatever. It can be an area, coordinates, distance, whatever. I know something. There's some kind of an information. Okay. I know it is a little bit counterintuitive, but just hold on what I'm trying to explain is that when I put it over here, this would be a kind of a, this kind of a surface, isn't it? It would get stretched. It would get stretched. Now, the question is that if I know the unstretched information over here, unstretched, sorry, unstretched information, that is say, for example, I diagonalize it and I get a kind of an identity matrix. So if I get the unstretched information from the Euclidean coordinate system and it put it over the stretched information over here, and then we can do the calculation through the metric tensor and get the details of the stretch information. What is important is that we have to get the stretch information from here because we want when we start patching it over and over it will all become like this 
it will become like this okay and that is what is called a map i will explain it is a concept of differential geometry so maps would be overlapping you see there are certain areas which are overlapping with each other so on so that overlapping and how do we do this map just simply imagine a map say for example a, a world atlas Prashant Kumar Pandey. Yeah, good evening, Prashant. Uh, please put down your email ID because I know I have missed your certificate to be sent. Please do send it to me so that I can quickly send tonight. Please put it right over here, right now. Your email ID. Asked it over in YouTube also, so I will just put it over here. So, um, is uh, sir uh, in by three by three metric is diagonal one in all and uh, either uh, other? Uh... Oh. Uh... I am a cardiac surgeon interested in physics. We need to use a lot in cardiophysiology. That picks my interest. Oh, really? I had no idea. Oh, I really had no idea. So, Dr. Prasanna. Uh, Dr. Prasanna, I would be very happy if you can just email me. I would like to be in contact with you. I really want to explore how in cardiac, uh, I mean to say in cardiac, cardiac physiology, how you it, it picks up interest. Uh, thank you very much. I mean to say that's tremendous. It's wonderful. Uh, Dr. Prasanna, I think, please be in touch. I would really be, I would love to do with that. Is there a photoelectric effect come from? Uh, no, 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 it is not here. We, we, I will come to this eyes later. Okay, so what I was looking into that, so when this patching information starts patching over each other, we use a kind of a map. And this unstretched information, once we know the details over here, we get into that. And here you see, that is what exactly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My email ID, doctor, is contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. And uh, I will just flash it over here. And my phone number is plus 91. Hope you're from India. 9830219677. So you can see it over here also. I am glad. I mean, to say this is wonderful. So, doctor, have you got it? Please do confirm me over the chat. This is my mobile number, WhatsApp, and this is my email ID. Afnan Ahmed. Afnan, very good evening. Where are you from? Okay, so what I was trying to tell you is that if I now go back to this one, possibly you get a better idea. So this is what the unstretched information, uh, doing a kind of a diagonalization of the matrix that you will do. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. And this, once it is put on a spherical coordinate, you see, we cannot have an identity matrix. This is minus one, one, r square, r square, sine square, theta. So that is different. But this metric tensor, I will explain you later because metric tensor again takes a lot of time to explain. So the metric tensor actually does this thing. It takes an information from the flat Euclidean space. And how does it do that? Now you see the sequence. Try to follow me. The metric tensor is getting the unstretched information from Euclidean space, putting it in a kind of a map and stretching it over a uh, uh, non-Euclidean spherical area and from there we are getting the information. Now how I am doing the unstretched information that is through the Euclidean uh, geometry and when I'm putting it over to this right hand side picture the, unst the stretched information I'm using those manifolds and in the next class what I'm going to do is that I'm going to explain a little bit about those uh, manifolds which actually takes place in terms of uh, 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 generativity because we have to take care of three things one is the Riemann curvature tensor Riemannian matrix Minkowski metric and uh, the metric tensor so each of them are very easily related are you getting my point each of them will be related so this takes place on this so now I hope you get a bigger picture let me summarize it in a few words first of all we came to know from Euclidean space whatever the geometries are about number one from there, what we came to know that we need to have the entire physics happening on what? Manifold. We learned about the books, what are the curves, etc. Manifold in generativity, there are two types of manifold. One is a Lorentzian manifold where the gravity takes place and one is a, uh, what you call this manifold, uh, uh, Riemannian manifold or pseudo-Riemannian pseudo -Riemannian manifold. So Riemannian manifold uh, where gravity is not taking place. So the entire geometry is now happening on manifold. So for manifold, what we need? We need differential calculus. We need differential geometry, all those mathematical stuffs. We have seen the books also. So on that manifold, when things are happening, we cannot match with those with the uh, Euclidean space. So if it is not matching with the Euclidean space. What we need to do is that we need to draw a parallel. 
once the moment we are drawing parallel lines, etc. Oh my goodness, things are not happening. So we are using differential geometry. So from that differential geometry, we are getting a patching over. Because the moment you see, I don't have a globe, it is there in my daughter's room. If you put the information on a piece of cloth, try to imagine this way, it will eventually get stretched. Stretch means things will become like this. Coordinates will be deformed. Topological invariance won't be maintained. Everything will be a kind of a deformation. So if this deformation is taking place, the immediate, where can I find your podcast? Uh, the podcast is coming eyes on this channel only. I mean to say you can find out the podcast in this channel tomorrow, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. But if you want to know about the previous podcast, I am giving it here. Just copy and paste it in your computer or where from you're watching, you will uh, get those podcasts, earlier podcasts. These are the earlier podcasts, okay? You can find it over there. <coughs> New podcast coming up tomorrow on particle physics, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So anyway, so what I'm doing is that if I get a patching, then the, the coordinates and the vectors would change. So for that, I need a tensor. So I need a tensor in order to make what Huth told, uh, maintain the invariance. I need a tensor so that if anything topologically changes, the main vector will be changed. Mercator projection. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Prasant is right. So I hope Mercator was, uh, I, I think, a car cartologist who actually designed that. So just like Mercator projection, which is uh, more on a very gross level, this is also the one. You're absolutely right. And that is why, Prasant, you see there is something called a projective geometry. That is also important, not related to relativity, but projectivity. Anyway, so we are profiting over here and the tensor do not become invariant. So we need those. And how do we do that? That is called what is called a diffeomorphism. I will come to that concept from the chart when we are smoothly transferring from Euclidean space to the curved space. How do we do that? And that is what is called mapping onto the manifold. These are, again, I'm going to, I know, uh, anyway, uh, let us make things easy. Uh, going to that what you call a manifold. Anyway, so tomorrow I'm not coming. Monday we will continue with this because it's a long learning. So what I will do, this part of the relativity will continue as it is uh, on Tuesday. I'm so sorry. On Tuesday we will do with this. But Monday I'm coming with a very surprising lecture with all of you. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So please don't miss it on Monday, uh, 9.15 p.m. Indian time on this channel. A very surprising lecture for you. And Tuesday onwards, again, I will start. So this will go. And now I have to make a little bit of, uh, you know, routine for what will happen with the uh, uh, tensors class because we left in the middle and what will happen with other things like a vector calculus, etc. So let me uh, work on it. I need to brush up. So anyway, I would really like to thank all of you who have joined here. Special thanks to Dr. Prasanna Sima M, who is a cardiologist and he has joined just to learn physics in order because he tells that uh, physics is required in cardiology. I'm immensely thankful for uh, senior Dr. Prasanna for joining. AIDS, I don't know where if you're, where you are from joining. If you can put it here, Vyasak Dutt and all those others, especially somebody joining him from Lahore, Pakistan, Maira Rahat and Thomas Huth has been, I think he's a kind of a, <laughs> I would say uh, the mediator of physics has got the things right on the point. So thank you very much. Uh, Monday, don't miss this wonderful lecture. Tuesday, I will be coming and continuing with Einstein Field Equation. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time uh, with particle physics. And two very senior you know, professors are coming in order to talk about quantum computing. I'm yet to declare the date, so it will be done. Professor and uh, HOD of Sri Jayaveda Research Institute, Cardiac Vascular Sciences and Research. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. What are the things study before your upcoming classes? Vishnu, I would re request you to go for special relativity. Go for that. That will become easier. Uh, I think you have written a mail. I will reply to that. What are the things that you need to know? So, uh, Dr. Prasanna, thank you for joining from Sri Jayavada, Jayadeva Institute of Cardiovascular Science and Research. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. People like you actually help us a lot. So, tomorrow, 8 p.m., Monday, 9.15 with a new lecture and so on. And His Highness has already come in from Ottawa. So things are great for you, I hope. And Ides from Wisconsin, USA. And Jude, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name right or not, because I would like to improve on the pronunciation. I should not take a name which is absolutely wrong. 
Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time with Dr. Ganguly and Monday with a surprising lecture and Tuesday with usual with mathematics and general theory of relativity. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, His Highness. Thank you.